Dr. Kevin Clazel from the University of Oklahoma. He's the university meteorologist. He is a drum corps fan and he has been observing our activity for a couple of years now, uh, especially as our activity pertains to the elements and the weather. Dr. K, good to see you. It's great to be here. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to have another Oklahoman on the show <laughs> with me. So tell me, what aren't we considering enough in drum corps when it comes to not just inclement weather, but weather in general? Well, I, I think there's this, this natural inclination. We as meteorologists have made it very easy for people to be their own meteorologist, right? Apps on a phone. Uh, and so when that happens, the notion there is, is that people tend to be fixated on a certain type of risk. And that certain type of risk tends to be the pretty colors on radar. And when you're looking at pretty colors on radar, the one thing about that is, well, that's where the rain is falling, and that's an important piece, but it doesn't give you a full portfolio of where is the wind shift that can knock things over, where are the lightning strikes, etc. So in many cases, that amateur use of app radar pretty colors misrepresents the risk. And when you start misrepresenting the risk, now you're putting kids in harm's way. I think especially when it comes to lightning, because not a whole lot of people, I think, understand how far ahead of a storm a lightning strike can occur. Absolutely. And it can be miles and miles ahead of the pretty colors or just outside the pretty colors in general. And one of the things I wanted to establish today is that if you look at the 108 or so events that DCI has during the summer, uh, approximately 85 of them are in literally the bullseye of lightning in this country. Wow. Okay, what else? Uh, heat? Middle of the summer? Heat is a is a big one. And, and one of the things about heat is that it doesn't impact everybody the same way. So heat's a little bit harder. I mean, we can feel the heat on the outside, but heat illness is going to be predicated not only on the atmospheric conditions, but on the human body conditions. So how have I hydrated? Have I made good use of my rest? Uh, you know, have I eaten the right way, et cetera. So heat, although it may be 107 degrees and everybody's exposed to the 107, it may be two, three, five performers that get stricken by heat illness due to other factors. I mean, it could be prescription medication that they're taking for something that, that also brings that on. So just raising the level of awareness with directors and with health and wellness teams to monitor, you know, intake of fluids, what they're drinking, what they're eating, is it nutritious, along with the weather pieces. It has to be comprehensive. You were talking about a metric right at the end of your uh, presentation. You've decided if these criteria are met, here's what we're going to do. This is pre-planning for bad weather, absolutely, right? Absolutely, absolutely. This comes out of uh, after the Indiana State Fair stage collapse, right? The event Which safety happened lines, while right, DCI just, was having its championships. Absolutely, just up the road five yeah. miles. Uh, and that particular night, there was also a Philharmonic performance that everything went great. They evacuated everybody ahead of time. And the, the lessons learned from the successful safe evacuation of a venue versus the one that had seven fatalities has been our source of, of lessons learned. And that is, you need to pre-establish what your decision protocol is going to be. It can't be, okay, here the weather's coming. Okay, you and I need to have a discussion. We need to decide what it is we're gonna do. All the while, the weather's getting closer and closer and closer. And now by the time we decide and then try and communicate that to the people in our care, it's too late. So do this in January, do this in February, have everything laid out of all the kinds of things that can happen. And we're using our experiences based upon what's happened at DCI events before to lay out a list of triggers and protocols that say, if this happens, then we're going to do this and do so immediately, no discussion. If this, then that, and you've already made the decision. Exactly, the decisions are made in January, not as the lightning is approaching in July. How do you think DCI is doing overall in dealing with weather? This is the model community, right? I yeah. mean, this is what I tell every other community that I go to, uh, is that you have to look at what Drum Corps International is doing. Drum Corps International is using professional meteorologists to support their events. Um, and that is where not only is the performer safety uh, at the first and foremost, but the spectators and the fans, right? The experience has to be as safe for the fans and the spectators as it is for the wellness of the performers. Now where we need to continue to push is the day-to-day, -day, right? The day-to-day -day rehearsal when every core is scattered in high schools and rehearsal grounds all over the place and everybody has a different level of shelter protocols or, or maybe in some cases don't really have good shelters and you've got to use your tour buses or whatever. So we want to get down to that level of detail that so no matter where a core goes, 
that they will have a plan for that specific location where they rehearse, and then DCI will have the plan for whatever the performance venue is. I know in broadcasting, we often send our reporters and anchors to weather spotter classes, to things like that. Would you recommend that each core have someone who is at least receives some training in storm spotting or in uh, you know weather response? Absolutely, and we've had some meetings offline during, during this week where we've talked about uh, who are the right people within the core administration and structure of support staff, almost to the point of having maybe a caption head, right, for, for <laughs> health and wellness, wow. right? And if you have a caption head for health and wellness, then that person would be sort of the overarching responsibility for everything associated with performer, staff, director, admin, health, uh, and that would include weather as a piece of that. It certainly is a part of keeping people healthy, safe, and right. well, isn't it? Dr. K, thank you. Absolutely. Great Dr. to be here. Kevin Clazel, University Meteorologist, Oklahoma University in Norman, one of our presenters here on Saturday at the DCI Annual Meetings. Hey, it's Dan Potter. Tina Pliagas and I will be covering all of the action at the Drum Corps International Annual Meetings and the Health, Wellness, and Safety Summit. And you can follow along at home as well. All you have to do is like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and of course the DCI YouTube channel. And we will bring you all of the action right here on the DCI News Network.